fours, the Santa Anita Derby has developed into much more than that. Here's Carolyn Conley with more. Santa Anita Derby starters have gone on to fame and fortune, winning numerous triple crown races and three-year-old championships. Runners have also been inducted into the Hall of Fame and claimed Horse of the Year titles. Let's take a look back at some of the more memorable moments in Santa Anita Derby history. The Santa Anita Derby draws its record crowd of 63,000 in California, all primed for a duel between Old Pueblo, number 1A, and Silky Sullivan, number 3, mounted by Willie Shoemaker, part of 130,000 riding on the mile in the eighth race. You couldn't say it now, but I think at one time you could say that he was the most famous racehorse in the world. Horse looked out of it, it's Silky Sullivan, dead last, 30 lengths back. His come from behind wins, dropping way, way back turned him into a, kind of a cult figure. That's the way Silky runs, and he's doing it again, coming into the stretch. If the someone uh, in a, say, a political race was way back in the polls and then came on late and won the election, someone would write, write that, you know, he pulled a Silky Sullivan. Silky Sullivan from about 30 lengths back. 20 years before Silky Sullivan, Stagehand made history as the only horse to ever win both the Santa Anita Derby and the Santa Anita Handicap in a single season. And he faced the immortal Seabiscuit, who gave him 30 pounds. He battled to the wire with Santa Anita Derby winner Stagehand, a three-year-old carrying only 100 pounds. And at the end, Stagehand on the outside prevailed. The following year, the filly Ciencia won in the final Santa Anita Derby from the old-fashioned starting gate. The 40s marked the absence of racing during the war years. Upon its return in 1945, the purse for the Santa Anita Derby rose to $100,000. Johnny Longdon won the first of five Santa Anita Derbies aboard on trust in 47. He also won on your host, Film magnet Louis B. Mayer bred both colts at his Paris stock farm. The 50s marked big changes at Santa Anita, including an addition to the grandstand and the dawn of turf racing at the Great Race Place. In 1954, Determined joined Hillgale as winners of the Santa Anita Derby, who have gone on to win the Kentucky Derby. Swaps, California's greatest homebred who never lost at Santa Anita. Swaps duplicated that feat in 1955 for owner Rex Ellsworth and trainer Mesh Tenney. Ellsworth and Tenney also sent out the 1956 Santa Anita Derby winner, Tarang. Tarang, who retired winner of more stakes at Santa Anita, a total of 10, than any other horse in the history of the track. The year after Silky Sullivan's dramatic come from behind victory, Silver Spoon scored another one for the girls. Trainer Bob Wheeler developed Silver Spoon at Wright and Bug Brush to win major stakes against Colts as well as consecutive renewals of the coveted Santa Margarita handicap for fillies and mares. With the dawn of the 60s, Santa Anita continued on the forefront of sports and greeted a new decade of derby winners in the most modern of facilities. Arcadian Johnny Longdon scored his fifth and final Santa Anita Derby victory aboard 4 and 20, who was trained by his son Vance. Undefeated 4 and 20 wins his fourth and biggest victory, first money of $100,000, and for Longdon, riding victory number 5,499. An important day to Santa Anita, and of course Arcadia, was Santa Anita Derby Day in 1963. The horse of the hour was the oddly marked and aptly named Candy Spots. The 1963 Derby was marred by a dramatic spill in the first turn, but the brightly colored chestnut Candy Spots emerged unscathed. It's Candy Spots in front. They come down the line of finish with Candy Spots winning it by one lane. Spike in the second three lengths. John Rock is safe. When Steve Cawthon was suspended in the spring of 78, Lafitte Pink Eye Jr. picked up the mountain in California. When I rode a firm in, in the a firm in the San Anita Derby, I, I just knew he'd win. I knew that uh, he had the potential to be a great horse. The times that I worked him, I could tell that this horse was very, very special horse. It set up the affirmed Aldar rivalry so perfectly because even though Affirmed was, you know, he was trained by a guy who originally started training in the East Coast, he had owners who were from the East Coast. His career began on the East Coast, and yet because he ran here at Santa Anita and won the Santa Derby, he was 
kind of adopted as the West Coast horse in the Kentucky Derby versus, and versus Aladar, who was the East Coast horse. He turned out to be a triple crown winner. Third place finisher Ferdinand came back to win in Kentucky for Hall of Fame trainer Charlie Whittingham. Gary Stevens scored the first of a record nine Santa Anita Derby victories aboard the Philly winning colors in 1988. The pair went on to win the Kentucky Derby. Lucas and Stevens, it's a driving finish, winning colors by a hand. And he's going down to the wire to win it by a distance. What an impressive winner, Sunday Silence. Sunday Silence went on to just miss taking the Triple Crown with his second place finish in the Belmont Stakes. The 1990s saw Santa Anita Derby winners from eventual champion AP Indy to the local blue collar horse Larry the Legend. Freehouse and Silver Charm began their rivalries as Baffert began his Triple Crown quest. Janine Sahadi became the first female to saddle a Santa Anita Derby winner with the deputy in 2000. Point given a half dozen in the Santa Anita Derby. Jeff Mullins made history beginning in 2003 as he sent out three consecutive Santa Anita Derby winners. The Santa Anita Derby the West Coast premier prep for the Kentucky Derby, and as affirmed will attest to, the gateway to the Triple Crown. For Inside Information, I'm Carolyn Conley.